Hello and welcome again to another solo quick tip from Intercat. My name is Alex Cock, business consultant. Today we'll be looking at how we can manipulate the visual experience within SOLIDWORKS itself and this is before we consider the process of going into photorealistic rendering and getting involved with the Photo360 application. So let's talk about this three part um, quick tip session that we're having this time. We will be dealing with this specific three areas. One, we're going to start off with the component appearance. How do we apply the um, appearances on components and manipulate it according to our requirements without spending too much time on it. From there we're going to move on to the second part of this whole quick tip series which um, takes a look at a case study on how we can make use of the manipulation of component appearances to suit our needs and finally we're going to top off this whole quick tip process with decals, a very commonly asked question that we figured would be worthy of a quick tip session. But let's talk about the fundamentals. First and foremost, when it comes to SOLIDWORKS appearance fundamentals, there are three areas that we should address and they are shown on the screen here. So let's take a look at the first point. Material properties versus material appearances. Very often we encounter the question, so what happens if I change the appearances? Does it overrule the material properties that I've already applied to a part? The answer is no. Material appearances are strictly visual, they do not change the physical properties of the component in any manner. This means we could, for example, potentially have a transparent part with steel properties. Of course, realistically, it does not apply, but for the purpose of our presentation, we might want to show a transparent steel component which may not necessarily exist in real life. The next point is how do we apply material appearances? Why is it so restrictive? This is again another set of questions that I, we encounter very often. Well, two general approaches which we are going to take a look in a while here. One is pre-select the faces or features of a component and apply the material. Or the other is to do a quick drag and drop. And let's switch over to SOLIDWORKS and take a look how we can do this very, very quickly and easily. For this quick tip, we are going to be using this gripper assembly. And this first part of the presentations, we are going to concentrate specifically on this gripper jaw component here. So let's open this component here and take a look at how it looks like right from the beginning. Now, this is what you see on screen, the default appearance from SOLIDWORKS without rear view and with the rear view graphics capability turned on, just some basic um, shiny finish and all. By default, of course, materials are not applied to this component here. By applying a specific material, the appearance that's attached to the material defined gets applied to the component also. Of course, we are not required to stick specifically to that appearance itself, and that's what gives us the flexibility to create a greater degree of uh, visual attractiveness to our parts, if I may call it. Now, since this is a shiny part, let's change the background to something darker so that we can see the full effect of it. This again is the default material appearance of the cast alloy steel that we've applied here. Now if you were to open the appearance tab here, you'll find that there's a whole collection of different material types that we can choose. And what we're going to do here is we're going to change the material of the component simply by dragging, say, the brush steel finish and dropping it onto that part. Now, we are given four options here to apply to the face that the material has been dropped on, the feature, the body, as in the solid body, or the entire component itself. So for this case here, I'm going to apply it to the entire component, and this is the outcome. Right now, the whole part has been <coughs> excuse me, imparted a brush finish. We can, of course, go on to add um, additional appearance definitions to specific portions of the part. For example, on this circular cutout here and a few other faces, I'd like to just apply a chrome plate finish. And this is what we get here. What I've done here is I've applied the appearance to specific faces. 
and when we go back to the assembly here we will find that this appearance has of course been also applied and carried over to the assembly itself on the assembly level however we have an additional option to change on the components and let's for example drag and drop a matte iron appearance we can choose of course to apply to faces or features as previously provided on the part level or we can have the appearance applied only to that component on the assembly level as what I've done here as you can see now two of the components still retain the default appearances that were created on the part level while this one component has been changed on the assembly level when we open this particular component we find that the default appearances on the part level have not been overridden now having seen a quick overview of how material appearances can be applied to various elements within a component or assembly the following list um, presents the appearance by the level of precedence in the hierarchy now basically what this list shows is each type of appearance in the hierarchy overrides all the appearances below it meaning appearances on faces take precedence over the appearance of features bodies and parts and so on and so forth so how does this information help us this brings us on to part two which we'll be seeing how the concepts of appearances can be used to enhance the whole viewing experience of our parts and assemblies but for now we've come to the end of part one of our quick tip from intercad my name is alex cock business consultant and this has been a quick tip session proudly brought to you by intercad thank you